God is faithful, amen? amen. God's mercies are new every morning. That song you hear every now and then, when I rise, just give me Jesus. In the mornings, that's what we need to start saying, Lord, you're all I need. If we really got up and meant that from our heart, you realize you would never have another concern? Uh, listen to what God's telling us today. If you got up and said, Jesus, you're all I need, you would never have another concern. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, because He's already met everything you need. You're already healed. You're already prospered. You're already sanctified, justified. Spirit, soul, heart, mind, and body. You're complete with God in Christ. So if you get up in the morning and say, Jesus, you're all I need, you believe that all those promises are yes and amen. And it's amazing you just said, tell them that now. Because if you don't see each morning as a gift of God, see, you're a gift to this world. When they need you, they need Jesus. Got the Bibles, turn to Lamentations, the third chapter. It's so important that you get up every morning and see it as a brand new day. Now in Ecclesiastes 3.15, it said that which is to be already has been. Every day when the sun rises, God already knew what that day was going to be like before He made the universe. You got quiet, you just got, yeah. Now you can either, like He said today, you can either follow what He wrote out for you. Remember some His plans are so far above yours. You know, when you make all your little worldly plans, you have limited the God who has no limits, who wants to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that you can think or imagine with your life here on this earth. We don't make a difference because we make our plans a priority instead of His plans that He wrote out before the world began. How are you going to be a world changer if you're trying to figure out how to do it? Oh. Just sharing. No meddling today, I promise you. Oh. Right, Maureen? Amen. It's okay, we got our feet up. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lamentations 3. Jeremiah knew about God's mercy. He, he was a man that prophesied and prophesied and prophesied and prophesied and they never changed. They never listened to the word of the Lord. It's amazing how, but, but Jeremiah knew God's mercy. He knew his heart. That's why he wept all the time. Because he pleaded with the people to listen to the word of the Lord, to repent and turn their hearts back in so God could heal them and set them free from the prisons they lived in. Amen? Amen. 22 to 27 in Lamentations 3. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. See, God has every right to consume all of humanity. Amen? Because what? His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Watch what Jeremiah says. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him. To the soul who seeks Him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Wow. Bearing the yoke in the youth, that's when you submit to God. Remember, his yoke, his burdens are light. They're easy. But when you yoke yourself to God, you're submitting yourself. You're humbling yourself under His sovereign Lordship over your life. That's why we don't walk in victory. We don't submit ourselves to the one that's overcome the world. And when it says His compassions fail not, in Psalm 145, 8 and 9, it says the Lord is gracious and full of what? Compassion. Slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and His tender mercies are over all His works. You're the works of His hands. His tender mercies are not only on you, they're over you, they cover you. Because mercy is like a form of grace in the body of Christ under the new covenant, unmerited favor. We don't get what we deserve. If that were the case, God would nail us all to the cross where we belonged and not Him. Amen? When I say each day is made new every morning, in Psalm 118, 24, it says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. See, when we realize we serve a merciful God, I'm going to show you what mercy means here in a minute. When we get up in the morning, we would realize that we don't deserve a good day. 
But we rejoice because He wants you to have one. That's His desire. That's why He came. See, you're free from any works. When you get up in the morning and say, when I arise, just give me Jesus. That's rejoicing in the Lord knowing He has you covered. Because you don't have to get up and sacrifice any animals. You don't get up and have any have-tos other than obeying the voice of the, of the Spirit. See, you're so free from any do's and don'ts, your job is to pray and obey and listen. Because He's always going to lead you in triumph and victory. It's so important that when you get up and say, just give me Jesus, Father, what you're saying is, you truly are all I need, because all I need is found in Christ. That's right. God is my all in all. I don't have any needs. I have some desires to see the whole world saved. I want to see those people I'm praying for out there in those covens that are trying to tear down the kingdom of God. I'm sorry, we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Amen. You can't tear down this kingdom I belong to. I'm a citizen of heaven. We have the victory, amen? amen. They can't win because they've already lost. Amen. They just don't know it yet. So God's had me changing my prayer life because it made me angry and then it made me more merciful when I studied about mercy. Amen. Oops. <laughs> We can show you about mercy right now. Why God says, I de desire mercy, not sacrifice. Those people are stuck in darkness. The devil has a hold of their hearts, minds, and souls, and he's blinded them to the truth of salvation in Jesus' name. But our God loves them and wants them delivered from that darkness. Can you imagine when people in witchcraft get delivered from darkness, what a witness they are for Christ? Amen? Oh, yeah. Hello. This is our city. Witchcraft's not welcome here. That's right, amen. The word mercy, now watch this, it's a refraining from harming or punishing offenders, enemies, persons in one's power, kindness in excess of what may be expected or demanded by fairness, forbearance, and compassion. See, God refrained. See, under the blood of the new covenant, you're never going to be judged. You will never face the wrath to come, ever, ever, ever. How merciful is God that He sent His Son for you. How merciful is our God. It gets better. It's a disposition to forgive. That means it's God's nature to forgive us. He's always been a God of mercy and grace and forgiveness, even in the Old Covenant, of pity or kind. The power to forgive or be kind, to give us clemency. Everybody sitting in this room, everybody on this planet before they got born again was on death row. You were shown clemency. You were exonerated. You were declared innocent. Innocent. Not guilty because of the blood of the Lamb. How merciful is our God. In the Old Testament, they tried their hardest. They're bringing this... Their, Lambs without blemish and sacrificing the animals and the doves and all that stuff. Throwing ashes and sackcloth on them and oh my God, the sky's falling. All we got to do is go, God have mercy. Because you got nothing to sacrifice because the last sacrifice went to Calvary, amen? amen? And He overcame sin and death. Your sins and mine. And all of He paid for all of humanity's sins, not some of them. Past, present, and future. So mercy means a whole lot more. That was that Hebrew word has said that I told you before. It's an act of love towards another, those that are in need or suffering, those that are the enemies of God. And everybody is an enemy of God that doesn't belong to Him through His Holy Son, Jesus. Everyone on this planet is an enemy of God that doesn't belong to God through the salvation that comes in no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So when you see people in darkness from now on, Mercy. 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 God's going to get you really good by now. I didn't think we were going to meddle this week, but God can't help himself. <laughs> you don't need to go there. One little verse. Psalm 139, 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Genesis. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Now when you look at it, people that aren't so lovable, but all of you were born lovable, maybe I was the only one that wasn't, praise God. Uh, 
<laughs> Why don't you see everybody else as being fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God? Mercy changes now, doesn't it? Because when he, saw, he showed me those covenants a long time ago, when I saw them praying directly at me the other day, two groups of them out there in the Northwest, I went, okay, this changes things. It's because when we're in the last days. And the devil can't stop what God has begun, but he'll try and throw a wrench into your life if he can get away with it. That's why I said you choose wisely who you fellowship with. You choose wisely and be discerning of what you listen to and what you hear. Because let me tell you something, the worst thing that can happen to a Christian is bad leaven. Jesus warned us of the leaven and the Pharisees, which was religion. Jesus came to destroy religion, which is all works of the flesh. I was raised in all the things I was going to have to do so God might love me someday. And, he might sh and, he, and maybe I won't have to go to hell. I was raised that way. That doctrine that I was taught was condemnation, was judgment, was expectations in me to live up to something. I'm sorry, I can't live up to that standard. Nobody can. Nobody. There was only one that was born holy and pure without sin. And it was Jesus Christ. And yeah, praise God is right, but guess what? The hope of glory lives in you, the sinless one. See, we conquer sin by letting the one that conquered it do it. You turn your nature over to his nature so your nature and his become one. A holy nature working in unison with the Father's will. Amen? And the only way you can do that is to deny yourself and pick up your cross, which is your calling, and follow Jesus. Making that fully, 100% commitment to what God wants to do with us. Some of you are resisting me. I'm just a messenger. Well, the next time you see somebody and you're mad at them, when I sat there the other morning and he gave me that real early in the morning, he said, why don't you see everybody else fearfully and wonderfully made? Because they're all made in my image. Everybody on this planet is made in the image of God. He even says in James, you can't curse, you can't praise God and curse man who's made in the silence with the likeness of God. See, so start showing mercy. Start showing don't be a sucker. Don't be a doormat. I'm not saying that. I learned that the hard way as a young Christian. I had people walking all over me, up some one side, down the other, taking me to the cleaners. Finally, God said, that's your fault. And then he showed me a vision of a doormat. He said, I didn't make you a doormat. He said, I said, test the spirits whether I send them to you or not. <laughs> Love them, show mercy, but don't be a sucker. Oh, well, that was for somebody besides me in this house. Glad you're not handling. No, I would never. But I learned. Yeah, did I love them? Yeah, but God said, listen, these people are walking all over you. This whole turn the other cheek thing, first of all, that's not if somebody hits you, that's in spiritual matters. you got the spirit of discernment in you. The devil's going to put people in your life and they're going to play on your emotions. Oh, that's not very Christian. Well, it's too bad if you don't like it. See, because then I finally found that verse that says I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please God. That makes me an official bond servant. You're not going to make everybody happy. I was just reading Romans the other day. Try and be at peace with all men if you can. I'm sorry, some people you're just not going to have a peaceful relationship with. Amen? It just isn't going to happen. <laughs> you just can't reach some people. But it's okay, church. They haven't been touched by Jesus yet. He may be trying to touch them. Don't make it worse. But don't be an enabler. One of the hardest things is, is we enable people. Parents do it to their children, their grandchildren. Once you enable people, you've joined them. And you've left God out of the equation. Who's the only one that can change a person? Amen? Amen. So now that we got that mercy part straight, I told you I wasn't going to melt. See that? Wasn't bad. <laughs> It's all good. Smile. God loves us. Turn to Psalm 63, 1-5. This Psalm, David was out in the wilderness. Remember something, he had some issues, but this is when he was out in the wilderness when I was looking this up, when his own son was chasing him. Talk about a lonely feeling. You know, a lot of David's crying out to God was when Saul was chasing him in and out of the caves, trying to kill him for 13 years. How would you feel being anointed the king of Israel 
and all of a sudden the guy you're replacing is trying to kill you for 13 years and you've got to go hide in the caves. <laughs> I, it's, it's amazing what we can learn from that whole thing. When God calls you to something, believe me something, the trials are coming. The testing of your faith is coming. Your faith is going to be tested and questioned by others around you, especially in the church. Amen? So don't be surprised when God calls you. Like He just said, Jeff had a clear vision of what we taught here last year. Coming up higher. It's amazing how many Christians get born again. Yeah, I'm seated with Christ. The next thing you know, they're living like the devil. Because you come back down to an earthly realm which you don't belong in. We're in a spiritual realm. We belong to a spiritual kingdom. We worship in spirit and truth. God is spirit. John 4, 24. It's so important that we stay here. <clears throat> like the other day, last week, when I was getting attacked this week, I didn't realize why I could barely move my arms and stuff. My father got in the shower and started praying in tongues. I said, Lord, what is this? That's when I saw what was coming after me. <clears throat> so we dealt with it in here on Friday night. Amen? Amen? And it's amazing. Now he's got me praying for their salvation. <clears throat> Yes, canceling their tongues, you bind up the tongues of the occult, you condemn those tongues, not the people. Because you want them saved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 63, 1 through 5. There's something about, like it said in Lamentations, they are new every morning. The morning time in your lives, when I was studying this, God told me, you better change your mornings. Yeah. Yeah. Change your early morning hours of your day. You need to. Because that's where you're going to get your instructions, your wisdom, your revelation knowledge for the day. He's going to show you what to do, what to avoid, where to go, where not to go. Because we're in some wild times, amen? Watch what he's doing out in the wilderness, how David always cried out to God, Oh God, you are my God. Watch this. Early I will seek you. See, there's something about seeking God first thing in the morning. Watch this. You, my soul, my soul, his inner man, thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I look for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your what? Loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied with morrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Wow. <clears throat> Look at David. Out in the wilderness, running from his own son. That was after David fell. Because the prophet told him, the sword's never going to leave your house. See, don't be surprised when people closest to you turn on you because of your walk in Jesus. God's going to tell you to do something. They're going to want you to do what they want you to do. I'm sorry, your family didn't die for you. Jesus did. You weren't bought with man's blood, but with the blood of Jesus Christ, the sinless Lamb. Oh, and I'm never saying disrespect people. I'm never saying disrespect family members, your parents, children, whatever. <clears throat> what I'm saying, if you got people even in your own family that are pulling you away from your journey, you need to go, nope. No, you can't. No, this is my anointing that God put in me for my purpose, not yours. I'm not joining you there just because you can't control me, which it's always about control and manipulation. None of you have ever been manipulated by family members, right? Did you see that reaction? Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> yeah, it's true. People lay the guilt trip on you. Hello, church. God's speaking to us today. Remember something? Just give me Jesus. Early in the morning I will seek you, Lord. Because you will order my steps when I do. God plans again yesterday. Yeah, they worked. Everything that I had laid out that I was going to get done, plus the sermon and everything else, all the other little extra stuff, didn't happen. God had a different idea. Because once I finally got going, He said, no, go here. No, go do this. No, come here. Then we prayed. Me, Ralph, and Valerie yesterday, we kind of met here at the same time. I was bringing supplies in. Then I was going to go, no. I didn't tell you. Go store, go home. Okay, see? But he protected me. I don't know what was going on in the streets. God did. If you've noticed lately, the sirens, the ambulances, and the cop cars lately, it doesn't stop anymore. <clears throat> the devil is working overtime to destroy life. We're here to bring the life of Christ to people. Amen? 
Amen. In Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek His kingdom and His righteousness first. There's a verse He threw on to add to this. Remember, we're in a day where people need to make their decisions. And they need to make the number one decision, are they going to follow Jesus or they're not? And I'm not just talking about the unsaved. I'm talking about the saved. I don't know how many people I've seen on TV lately. You know, all, you know when God's Spirit is moving? When you hear the same thing here, 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 and here. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Look how quiet it just got. You don't have time in your life till He comes back to play anymore. You need to call upon Him every morning and to seek His face. Because we're in a place right now where you need His guidance. You need His leading. <clears throat> the other day when I was praying with Ralph and Valerie here, I'm going to go home because I got the meat and everything for the chili. I got out that door, I turned around, Valerie goes, you're back. I got almost into the vehicle, he says, it's going to be tough making the chili in the morning if you don't take the chopped meat on <laughs> See what happens when you're sensitive to him? I knew I was forgetting something, just didn't know what. I got outside, I turned right around, came right back in. He is so faithful to us. See, you don't think God's concerned with every little detail in your life. But He's involved with every step you take if you let Him. You know how many times I've had to say, where's my keys? I usually put them in the same spot. Sometimes I don't. When I come home, put the car in the garage, and I bring groceries in. Sometimes we're in there by the back seat instead of in the back of the vehicle. So I put my keys down. Bring the groceries in the house, close the door. Now i got to go out that afternoon, I'm looking for my keys. Why don't you try looking in the vehicle? They're in the garage. <laughs> See, if we would ever be sensitive to God, He knows where the ants are walking right now. Yeah. He knows where every bird is in the sky and every fish is in the sea because He made them all. Yeah. Trust Him. I'm sorry, you need Him. Right. Your rebellion towards Him of not acknowledging in all your ways is why you pass on straight. That was it. But you see what I'm saying? There's something about your early morning hours seeking God's face. I'm sorry, if you've got to get up five minutes earlier, do it. It's worth it. I'm tired half the time too, but you know what? Praise God. He is my strength, my fortress, my high tower. He always equips me to do everything He's told me to do. Because it's not I who live, but Him in me and His strength carries me. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 5, verses 1 to 3. That word in the morning is so important about just give me Jesus. There's about another 30 scriptures I could have used about in the mornings and the early hours. It's all over the Bible about seeking God. Jeremiah, seek Him with your whole heart and He'll show you things you've not yet seen. 33. All these things about seeking God. But He showed me the importance of you getting up in the morning and saying, Jesus. Jesus. Somebody's calling. Is that Jesus? Somebody's Thank you, Lord. Psalm 5, 1 through 3. Watch what David says. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry. My King and my God, for to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. See, it's made new every morning. His mercies. See, when you approach God in the mornings, know how merciful He is. He showed the greatest act of love that there's nothing to compare it to. There's no greater act of love than the Father sending His Son and Jesus saying, I lay my life down freely for all. See, when you go to God, you, got, you go to someone that's so merciful you can't even measure it. That loves you so greatly you can't measure it. When I was studying this and he showed me, he said, there's only one real act of pure love. That was mine. You should have tears in your eyes. You really should. There is no greater act that we can compare the sacrifice 
of the sinless Lamb for our salvation. Amen. That is mercy beyond measure. It's an act that none of us deserve, nor earn, nor can we ever. That act of such great, powerful love that saves anybody that comes to it. It's hard to talk after that. took me to the cross once. Church was so ungrateful what he has done for us. Help me, Lord. That word mercy takes on a whole new meaning today. It should soften your heart so much that you never look at lost people again the same. What did Jesus say on the cross? Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And let me tell you, the Romans didn't put him there. The Jews didn't put him there. Our sin did. That's what put Jesus on the cross. When I hear people talk about that stuff, I just go, you out of your mind. Have you had an encounter with the Holy One of Israel, the heavens and all the earth? And they couldn't have. Because they would never blame anybody. They would look in the mirror and go, thank you for being sin for me, Lord, so that I could become righteous. I knew something was up there. A little verse in Psalm 30, verses 4 and 5. Sing praise to the Lord, you, His saints. You're saints of God. You're no longer sinners. Hello? And give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. For His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for night, but joy comes when? In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. See, He kept telling me this whole, this whole week since I've been studying this. Come to me in the morning. When you're seated in heavenly places because of His great mercy that He has shown all of mankind. Oh, Lord Jesus. <coughs> Oh, Lord Jesus, Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you believe it? Yes. See, when you get up in the morning, and you're, getting, and you're praying and getting ready to go for, out for the day, do you believe mercy and loving kindness is going to follow you all the days? See, you should have a good expectation when you approach God in the morning. Remember, Jesus tore the veil. Tore the veil. The sacrificing stuff is over. When you approach Him and say, Jesus, you're all I need in the morning. Just give me Jesus, Father. Just give me Jesus. Let me tell you something. You're approaching the merciful God that promises you His mercy and loving kindness is going to follow you all the days of your life. It says in Psalm 103, He's going to crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He crowns you with it. Never mind follow with it, it's already on you, amen? amen? And it's so important that we approach Him as who He is. Psalm 92, 1 through 2. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your what? Loving kindness in when? The morning. And your faithfulness every night. See this thing about the morning He showed me? If we really started all mornings off with Jesus and gave Him the day, how much smoother it would go for all of us. I'm not saying you don't have a job, you don't have to be somewhere. That's not what God's saying. What He's saying is, get up and give me your day. In the Proverbs it says, commit your works to me. So your thoughts are established. When you get up every morning and say, just give me Jesus, and you praise Him for His faithfulness, and that you're crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies, and it says, commit your works to me, and your thoughts will be established. When you do that, you've really surrendered every day of your life to the one who owns you. It is then that you're going to hear His voice. It is then you're going to walk in victory. Because too many of us get so busy, we forget to acknowledge Him first thing in the morning, and we're getting ahead of the game. He wants to order your steps because He loves you, and He wants to protect you. <clears throat> he has shown me that over the years. He said, you know, when I have to tell you to sin, to not go, to go and then, then come home, don't go do that, come home. He said, if you realized how many times I was protecting you, 
You can't count them. <laughs> he is with us every step of the way if we would let him. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to show you how merciful God really is. Turn to Romans 5. This gives mercy a whole new meaning today. When you realize how merciful God truly is towards all of us, we learn to become grateful, thankful, children of Almighty God. We stop making our own plans. We stop with our rebellious nature. I mean, that's one thing when God molds you. You know what's going to manifest? Your rebellion. Yeah. Why did God? Now, Melissa's never had rebellion, but the rest of us will work. Why would you? Thank you, Jesus. And we should smile. You know what God understands. He knows you better than you do. Amen? Amen. Romans 5. Look how merciful our God is. Just 8 to 10 and 6 to 11, but we'll just read verses 8 to 10 in Romans 5. But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were what? Enemies. We were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Colossians 1, 21-23, it says you were alienated and enemies of God before Christ reconciled you to Himself through His Son. <clears throat> that word mercy, the act of love, He showed towards all of us when we were yet sinners. You're saved from the wrath to come, church. We are so free from judgment. We are so free from condemnation. We are so free. I have a great expectation that when I leave here in the twinkling of an eye, I'm going to be home with the Lord. Okay? Because I've already seen it. So guess what? John says this all the time. It's win-win. Okay. God takes you home. Oh. That's why I don't do funerals. I do celebrations of life. And I'm envious when I do them because it's kind of like, really? My time's not up yet? Because I know where they are. See where your uncle is? Guess what? He doesn't miss here. In Revelations it says you don't even look back. You have no remembrance of earth. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. So your uncle, I'm sorry you and Ralph, guess what? He's not thinking of you guys right now. Because <laughs> he's with Jesus. <laughs> he's with Jesus. And it's that awesome. See, celebrate people that go on before you. Because where they are, you don't go hang out. The graves have already been opened. That's why the grave is not a place you're ever going to. He destroyed the grave. The grave has no victory. Death has no sting. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Where was it? Enemies. Now, God always changes it. I study for days. But he said he wanted to show me how he was planning to show all of humanity mercy long before he ever came. But he spoke of it in the Old Testament. What he was going to do for mankind in his great mercy that has no measure, has no limit to it. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ezekiel 36. That's the same chapter in the beginning where it says, He does all, he performs his word not for you, but for his own name's sake. We're just going to read. Verses 25 to 27 and 36. <clears throat> See, he planned out what he was going to do for you before he came. He knew the transformation. When I say it's made new every morning, you need to remember something. Every one of you saints in here is a brand new creation. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. You are not. You are a saint, the Bible says. We just read that on the other scripture. You're saints of God in Christ. Uh, it, it's amazing how many Christians walk around just an old sinner saved by grace. Well, then you're not saved. That's right. Amen. You got a new nature. You got His. Yeah, you don't get it perfect every day. I mean, Kelly does, but the rest of us. Yeah, Kelly. No pressure, though, Kelly. None. No pressure on you. Paul's going, oh, God, I'm going. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Your husband was laughing. <laughs> 25 to 27 in Ezekiel 36. Look what God planned out and spoke through Ezekiel all the way back there. 
See, God was planning your salvation out before He said, let there be light. It was already all written already. Everything was written, what Jesus was going to do when He came, before He made this whole universe. It's, it's mind-boggling that God loved His own creation so much, He knew it was going to fail. He knew it was going to break His heart, but yet He knew He was going to send our Redeemer. He knew it. And He says so in Ezekiel right here, what He's going to do when you become born again, when you receive the mercy and the grace of God to get saved, this is what happens to you. This is why we have to get a vision from God, a spiritual enlightening, how new you really are. You're not some old person anymore. You don't have, your old nature has been crucified with Christ. Amen? Then it says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from your idols. I will give you what? A new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Wow. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if there's anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, we really need to allow God to show us that He doesn't see anything that you work before your salvation. He doesn't see anything you've done. He doesn't see your old bad attitudes. He doesn't see the heart of stone that you had. He gave you His heart that is filled with compassion and filled with mercy and love and understanding. See, God, when I, was, when I was even praying last night late, and I'm going, He says, my children don't really understand me. They really don't understand how much I love them. Because I don't see anything that was. There's no remembrance of it. You realize how many of us walk around with what was? I'm telling you, church, what was doesn't exist. It says everything you did is as white as snow. There's no, there's no remembrance of it. God says He's so holy, He can't even remember anything you've ever done. Ever. 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 And you won't remember what you do in the future because the blood is paid for it. See, that should make you want to be a holy person. Yes. Want you to do what's holy and pleasing in His sight. Knowing what He has done for us. Amen? Amen. It is so important that you see God's eternal plan for your life. You know why we don't bear eternal fruit? Because we think temporal. We're making too many plans. What you got to do by the time you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. You know what my plan is? What do you want me to do today? Everybody goes, you should do more planning. I try. You know what I made? A mess. Because every time, and it was good stuff. It was godly. When I was listening to people tell me I should be doing this, when God was telling me just the opposite, we were talking before, God's not like us, folks. He doesn't think the way we do. And when you start instructing God, God have mercy on you. That's when you get confusion. And when you're confused, it didn't come from God. Remember, He's not the author of what? Confusion. You have love, power, and a sound mind. So God's going to lead you in peace and joy and victory. Because He's got a far better plan for us. See, you're brand new. I'm telling you, if any of you today leave here and you don't see yourself as a brand new creature, you won't live that way. If God tells you, how's it going? Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Behold, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to bring it to pass. It says, don't ponder the past. Don't dwell on that which was. I'm going to make a river in the desert and a road in the wilderness. Yes. Well, I'd like a nice river going through Peru. My wife saw this town as a lake. We better be careful. She saw boats. That's like when we see people pulling on healing boats. I'm going, is that lake coming? <laughs> And let me tell you something, they have a big enough earthquake in California, which they're going to have. They're going to have it. They're going to have it. Death Valley will be a nice lake. We won't have to go far to go boating. Hey, just saying. I always wanted oceanfront property. You just can't live on the east or the west coast anymore. The, the liberal lunatics have taken it over. 
but God. This nation's being born again, church. Keep praising that way. <clears throat> when I say it's new every morning, see, there's, there's a newness in me that has a great expectation of God manifesting in such a way that people are going to go, God's alive. And we're going to worship today. We said, we don't have idols. We don't worship statues. We don't have religious formulas. We got Jesus. We pray, we walk in the Spirit. We live in the Spirit. See, because God made me a promise when I was first saved because my body was so destroyed from 25 years of alcohol and drug abuse and other stuff. Then He was going to restore me. Uncle, what are you talking about? And then He gave me certain scriptures. See, when God makes you a promise, well, how could that be? You know what He's going to do? He's going to confirm it with the Word of God. Remember something, if you hear something that's not confirmed in the Word, it didn't come from your Father. It didn't come from Him. Your Father doesn't work that way, amen? In Joel, the second chapter, you don't need to go there. Just verse 24. This is the oil I've been talking about in here. Because after that verse, when you read further down, he says he's going to restore all the years that were stolen from you. But this is the anointing that comes from the olive tree right here in these last days. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat. And that shall overflow with new wine and new oil. I say that because the new wine in the new covenant is Matthew 9, 14 to 17, verse 17. Normally they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break and the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine, new wine, into new wineskins, and both are preserved. The new wine, when you study that, is the new covenant. He was talking to the religious leaders because the wines were made, the skins were made from goat skin, and once that fermented, those wineskins were done. See, that's why he rebuked the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They couldn't handle the new covenant. Pray for your enemies. Bless those who persecute you. Forgive those who despise you and hate you and use you. The new wine. It's the new covenant of mercy, of grace, of salvation. See, and Jesus said, you can't receive what I'm saying. You, can't, you got eyes, you can't see. You got ears, you can't hear me. Because you're living under the old covenant. You're a bunch of people running around thinking you're all that when they weren't. See, that's that end times oil that is now manifesting in our hands in here. See, we have such a we're in such a divine time. We need to get excited about God manifesting in our lives. Amen. Man, when you pray for somebody the next time and all of a sudden your fingers got oil on and they're gonna go, where'd that come from? The olive tree. Amen. What are you grafted into? Jesus. The olive tree. The olive tree. When Jeff had that vision, the olive tree, God's going to put it right back in the dead sea and it's going to, it's going to come to life again. Because the 12 tribes are now being brought back and they're going to go around the dead sea. When he saw that, I said, wow. Wow. Because that's something God's has shown a lot of us for a long time. But when he got that vision last week of it, it made so much sense. Because one for Israel, I get letters from them all the time. I got emails from them the other day with the... By the way, you've helped graduate a whole bunch of people from their school just now. I mean, so we're really making a difference. I'm actually going to call them tomorrow and let them know about that vision. And because the 12 tribes are coming back. That should put an excitement inside of you to get about your father's business. Because now that they're, and they're going to be around in the olive tree. Remember when he threw the tree in the bitter water when Amen. they came out of Egypt? Yes. What happened? It turned sweet. They could drink it. It brought life. It brought life. Amen? Amen. It's so important that we start seeing things in a whole different way. If you get up in the morning and you go, it's just going to be like yesterday, your day's not going to be new each morning. That's right. You got quiet at your time. I got two that's right. It's mercies are made new every morning. See, I have an expectation that every day is going to be different than yesterday. See, tomorrow, when I get up in the morning, I have an expectation it's going to be different than today. Because we are in the last days. And God really truly is on the move. But He's calling you to seek Him like you've never known. David always cried out to God. Everybody goes, well, I'm not going to cry out to God. What do I want to do that for? And when you don't, it just means you've got pride. If David did, why don't we? 
if David danced before God, why don't we? See, it's never changed. People have changed. We've changed in our own reverence of a holy, righteous God. That's what's been lost in the church. They don't teach awe and reverence and godly fear anymore. They teach going, jumping up and down, singing a bunch of songs, but it's not about that. We worship in here. We exalt in here. That's why when we're worshiping in here, you can feel the anointing. You can feel God touching your body. You can feel in your heart that God is well pleased with us. I mean, we're having so many angels in here now, we got a whole covering of them. You keep praying for your president. You keep praying for the elections. Because let me tell you something. When we start crying out to God for this whole country to repent, Remember, everybody uses that Second Chronicles like it's against the, the unsaved. No, it says when my people. Amen. It doesn't say the heathen. My people. When we cry out. When we cry out. Folks, there's nothing wrong with crying out to God. You want to, you just don't. That's like, oh man, I don't want God to see me like this. What do you mean? We all stand open and naked before him, Hebrews, okay? There's nothing he doesn't see or know. Come on, church. It's so important that you get past yourself, leave yourself behind, and really let him take over. Learn how merciful your God is, the greatest act of love that's never been equal. There's nothing to compare this to. When people talk about acts of love, there was one that was pure and holy. I and mean, like I said, when he told me, he said, so many people try and talk about all these great acts of love when there was really only one that was perfect. And it was his act of love towards us. Amen? So, but that's what he put in your heart, by the way, to love others with. The love of God was poured into your hearts by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5. Amen? 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 Amen.